Amen. A very warm greetings to you coming from All Saints Cathedral. And we are delighted that you have journeyed with us on this journey through the Holy Week. I am Ivan Zomolo, Assistant Provost here at All Saints Cathedral, where I serve as the worship minister. Our sign language interpreter is Madam Rosalind Njuguna. May we pray as we begin. Lord, we thank you for the last two days in the Holy Week. As you get into this third special day, we ask that one more time you speak to us from the riches of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, as I said, a very warm welcome to you. I'd love us to read from Matthew chapter 26, verse 3 to verse uh, 5. The Bible says, Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him, but not during the feast. They said, or there may be a riot among the people. Now, on Monday, we reflected on, um, on Jesus clearing the temple, and we learned some truths there. Yesterday, Tuesday, we reflected on Jesus at the Mount of Olives, and we learned two, three deep truths. One was that as believers, we must always be consistent with God, regardless of time. But secondly, we learned that out of the prophecy that Jesus gives about Jerusalem and its destruction and the end times, that we must always live our lives in light of eternity. But thirdly, we learned that as Judas negotiated with the Sanhedrin to betray Jesus, that we must always be on the guard against the temptation to conveniently conceal our faith or betray the Lord in whatever way. Today, we call it a quiet Wednesday. This is a quiet Wednesday in the Holy Week, leading up to things that will happen tomorrow, Thursday. Actually, the Bible does not say much of what happened on the Wednesday. There are those who hold the view from interpretation alongside other sources that after exhausting two days in Jerusalem of confrontation, that Jesus might have taken time to rest in his place of residence in Bethany in preparation for the Passover the following day. However, there are those who suggest, like Luke, for example, who writes in chapter 21, verse 37 to 38, that Jesus continued to teach in the temple. And so it's likely that Jesus could have gone back and continued teaching in the temple because there are a series of teachings that others would place in the temple. Others also suspect that this is the day that the Sanhedrin farmed up their plot to kill Jesus, as recorded in Matthew 26 that we have read. And so those are basically possibilities as we seek to reconstruct the history of what would have happened in the Holy Week right after Palm Sunday. So those are two possibilities, and obviously I'm saying that there are interpreters who also think that Jesus took time off to rest and to prepare for the following day. It is not so much on which interpretation you go with, but I want us to pick two lessons out of this. That the fact remains that Wednesday precedes Thursday, the day that the Passover will begin. And that Passover sets in motion very, very difficult 
hours for Jesus leading up to Friday. And so lesson one is that whereas Jesus is God and knows everything, he still allows himself to face the painful experiences that will unfold on Thursday and on Friday, which include being betrayed, being arrested, being flogged, being mocked, being tried, being crucified, and being killed, a brutal death. And so Jesus knew definitely that these things would happen, and scripture is full of such um, assurances. However, he allowed himself to be part of what God was doing, to be a conduit of the fulfillment of God's perfect will. And so the lesson there for us as a takeaway is that sometimes we must allow God's will to happen because in the midst of those very awful experiences lies the glory. The psalmist writing in Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Friends, did you know that Jesus wouldn't have been glorified had he not gone through persecution and the cross? And therefore, part of the package of glory is suffering. But sometimes as people, we do not see the end from the beginning. And therefore, it's okay to be anxious. It's okay to be terrified and to be afraid. It's okay to question God. It's okay to ask why. But this Wednesday, I want to remind you that in the midst of the awful experiences you could be going through, it is a time to sit back on such a quiet Wednesday and tell the Lord that let your will be done. Maybe you are experiencing a series of sicknesses. Or maybe during this difficult time you've lost your relatives or loved ones, and you are in grief. Maybe you or somebody close to you has lost their livelihood, and you're wondering why are these things happening like this. It is in God's will that he takes care of us during those difficult times, but at the end, he will deliver glory. And I pray that you will see joy at the tail end of the experiences that you're going through. And I decree from God's word that the Lord will fill your heart with mad joy and will crown you with laughter instead of mourning. The second lesson that I want us to pick from this is that scripture does not really say that Jesus wanted to run away. There are moments that he might have felt anxious. He prayed very sincerely, as we will see tomorrow in Gethsemane. But Jesus confronts this situation head on. He knows that death awaits him in the next couple of hours. But he does not run away. He continues actually to teach in the temple, if you go by the other interpretation. He knows that time is not on his side. And therefore, he continues to do what he must do when he has time. And that is why the evangelist John, in the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verse 4, says, quotes Jesus saying, that I must do the work of him who sent me while it is day, for night is coming when no one can work. Imagine, death is looming, but the Lord continues to teach. Beloved, we must learn to stay focused on the tasks that the Lord has entrusted to us, despite the plottings of Satan. And maybe, may I speak to you? Maybe in your workplace, there are lots of machinations around you. There are people you feel are plotting your downfall, are seeking to betray you, 
people falsely accusing you, generating false information to your supervisor so that you may be disciplined or removed could be a reaction because of something you have done or could be because you're strict and you want things to be done as a Christian in the correct way. Let me remind you, beloved, that you must remain focused on the assignment that the Lord has given you. Deliver it with integrity because time will not be on your side. Leave a legacy at the place of work. Leave a legacy in your business. Leave a legacy in your family. Do not be distracted by the plottings. By the way, as Nairobians, you know even in neighborhoods where we live, there are lots of shenanigans that happen around issues of parking when you live in a flat, around issues of neighbors doing this or that. As a believer, learn to stay focused like the Lord stayed focused and deliver on what the Lord has entrusted to you too. Maybe you are in that estate, you are in that neighborhood, maybe you are in that chama for a reason. Do not be distracted. Remain focused and do God's work. The Lord will vindicate you. And so, two quick lessons. One is that we must allow God's will to happen and never be over anxious and allow the Lord to be in charge of the difficult circumstances we face. But number two, that we must, like Jesus, do the work that he has entrusted to us because the Lord will vindicate us. May we pray. Lord, on this quiet Wednesday, on the Holy Week, as we remember our Lord in his agony ahead of the Passover, may you strengthen our faith. If there are plottings the enemy is staging against us, Lord, anyone hearing us, we pray that you may thwart and scatter their plans. May you confuse the schemes of Satan, Lord, and cause them to fail. And we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you may raise your servants up, vindicate them, dear Lord, anoint them for ministry that you have entrusted to them in the marketplace. We pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God will cause their faces to shine like Moses' face and will repel any force of the enemy that is trying to charge towards them. Put a hedge of fire around your people, preserve and protect them, even from this pestilence of COVID. And we pray for your protection. We claim your healing and we pray that Psalm 91 may be actualized in our lives. So beloved, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord attend to you. May the Lord take care of you. May he shine his face upon you and scatter every form of darkness from around you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.